What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hey, I'm Lauren, and on my channel we talk about personal finance, including my family's own journey to pay off a five figure, no, six figure, I wish it was five figure, six figure student loan debt. And in the last two years, we have paid off over $120,000 of debt. Now that sounds like a lot and it is, but we're nowhere close to done. So if you wanna follow our journey to pay off all of our debt down to zero, then hit that red subscribe button down there. I'd love to have you. Today, we are getting into some tips of how we were able to pay off so much debt in two short years. Now, obviously, we have high income and that's a part of it. But beyond that, we had high income for a number of years and made no progress on our debt. And we started out with almost $400,000 of debt. So we had to really, really push if we wanted to become debt free sometime this decade. So I want to get into some of the suggestions I have for you. If you are on a debt free journey, no matter how much debt you have, no matter how much income you have, there are some really important things that you can do to level up your debt payoff skills that I am going to break down right now. My first suggestion is to start by paying off your highest interest debt. Now there's different strategies to pay off debt. You can start with your lowest balance or your highest interest debt or a different combination of custom order. But for us, Paying off high interest debt was a really big priority. We had a bunch of credit card debt that had interest rates ranging all the way up to 25%. And I didn't really know anything about interest rates before I started getting really involved in learning about debt and personal finance. And so I had no idea how high that was. For example, my car at the time had a 3% interest rate and then my credit card had a 25% interest rate. And I just really wasn't paying attention to how much that was impacting our debt payoff. When we started paying off our high interest debt, you and you're paying less interest because you get those high interest debts paid off, then you're you're basically getting a raise every time you pay off a debt, especially a high interest debt, because you are getting extra money to then go towards your other debts and especially going towards the principal of your other debt. Because when you have high interest debt, so much of your payment goes towards interest that you're barely making any progress on the principal. So I think understanding the difference between interest and principal and how your payment is applied for debts with different interest rates is really, really important. And if that's not something you're clear on, then I would dig into each one of your debts and get really clear on that. I have a debt payoff spreadsheet that I use to track all of my debts and all the progress. So I'll link that in the video description if you're interested in purchasing it for yourself but it's the first way that I was able to keep track of everything, really opened my eyes to how much we were paying in interest and helped us be more effective with our debt payoff strategy. Tip number two, something that we did many times over the past two years is refinance our debt. So when you have high interest debt, sometimes you can improve the situation even before you pay it off by refinancing. Refinancing is a really big decision, so it's important that you do your research. I refinanced our credit card debt into a personal loan through SoFi and I was able to lower the interest rate on our credit card debt from you know in the 20% 20 25% we had various different cards all the way down to I think it was just under 12% like 11 point, let me look, what was it? Yeah, 11.87%. So we basically cut our interest rate in half when we consolidated all of our credit cards into a personal loan and that really leveled up the speed with which we were able to pay off our credit card debt because much more of our payments were going towards principal and less was going towards interest. Now, if you want to check that out for yourself, I do have a referral link for you guys. If you want to just check your rates and it doesn't affect your credit at all and to refinance any of your credit card debt or any of your other debt with a personal loan that I will put the link below. If you go forward with the refinance, you get a $300 cash bonus. So it's a pretty good deal. That was another incentive for us to do it because I was like, okay, we're gonna cut our interest rate in half. Plus I'm gonna get $300, which I'm just gonna apply to the balance of the loan and will be $300 closer to getting this debt paid off. When it comes to student loans, that's a much more complicated question, but I will say a couple of things. One is if you have private student loans, then I would definitely look into refinancing. We refinanced our loans into private loans from federal loans. So we gave up all the protections that the federal loans had. However, we did cut our interest rate in a third. It used to be like close to 8%. Now they're both, my husband's student loan and my student loan are both under 3%. And we did this over the course of several refinances and there was no fees to refinance. In fact, we got paid every single time. I think we made close to $3,000 over the past two years from cash bonuses from refinancing our student loans. So. 
it, again, it's a really big decision. If you have private loans, I would definitely look into it. If you have federal student loans, then again, you need to be really careful and make sure you're not going for a forgiveness, public interest forgiveness, or one of the income-based repayment forgivenesses or something like that. And also you're giving up the protections if you can't pay your bill or anything like that. So right now, as I'm making this video, student loans are paused, federal student loans are paused till May 1st, but we'll see what happens. They say that is going to end. It seems like it's never gonna end because it's gone on so long, but they keep saying it is going to end. And so at that point, if your interest rate is high and you're not going for a forgiveness program, I would suggest at least doing your research and looking into refinancing. So similarly with the personal loans, so if I, gives you a free refinance quote for student loans and then they'll give you a $300 cash bonus if you go forward with the refinance. Also, SoFi will match any interest rate. So if you find a better rate somewhere else, if you just screenshot that and email it to them, they will match any rate. And I like SoFi, I just found them very easy to work with. We've refinanced with them many times and even if you have a good rate with them and you find a better rate, you can refinance with them again. Like you don't have to go to another lender. So yeah. I really would recommend at least doing your research and looking into refinancing. All right, the next thing that we have done to pay off over $120,000 of debt in two years is we started using a zero-based budget. So a zero-based budget is a budget where you have all of your income and then all of your expenses. And when you subtract your expenses from your income, you get a zero. And so that doesn't mean you wanna spend all of your income every single month. All it means is that your expenses include any debt payments, any savings items, all of your financial goals. And so you have a plan for every single dollar that comes in every month and you're tracking every single dollar. So for example, if you have $5,000 of income and you have $4,000 of expenses, in your budget, you've already decided what you're gonna do with that extra thousand dollars and have it listed out in line items so when that money comes in, you don't accidentally spend it on going to Target or buying stuff on Amazon, and instead you put it towards your financial goals that you've decided like $500 towards a Roth IRA and $500 towards debt payoff, for example. If you are not familiar with zero-based budgeting and you are looking to see somebody do it in real time, I post budget videos every single month. Before the month starts, I post our budget of what we have planned to do with our money and then after the month ends i show you our budget of how we actually did with that plan we had for our money all in a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet is actually one that you can get for yourself again i will put the link to my etsy shop below i sell the debt payoff spreadsheet i sell the budget spreadsheet and then i also have an annual financial goal tracking spreadsheet so i sell them all separately and then also in a bundle if you want to get all three of them they each come with detailed video tutorials and they are instant downloads to google sheets the last thing i'll say about budgeting is i feel like there's a common misconception about budgeting that really is harmful which is people think that budgeting is restrictive and that you aren't allowed to spend if you have a budget and that's totally the opposite of the truth a budget allows you to prioritize spending on the things that are important to you but at the same time make sure you're accomplishing your financial goals so for example for us groceries having enough to spend comfortably on groceries is something that's really important also having personal spending money is important saving for vacation is really important so all of those things are prioritized in our zero-based budget but also debt payoff and saving for retirement are important. So in our budget, we make sure that 15% of our money is going towards retirement and that we are also allocating as much as we can extra to debt payments. So we're able to pay off $120,000 of debt, not just by putting every extra single dollar to it. We did this over two years. You can't restrict yourself for two years and expect yourself to keep going. It's kind of like if you do a crash diet, you can't crash diet for two years. It lasts for like a month or two at most and then you just go back to what you were doing and you gain back all the weight that you had lost because it's not a sustainable way to live. But if you have a budget that is sustainable, that allows room for things that you enjoy spending on within reason, but then also make sure you're prioritizing your other financial goals, then you don't feel restricted. You feel actually free to spend money because you have permission in your budget to spend money on things that are important to you. All right. The fourth thing we did to pay off our debt over the last two years is we tracked our net worth. And tracking your net worth is something that I was really scared to start doing because we had a net worth of negative 230,000 or so when we started doing our debt payoff. And I didn't start tracking our net worth till about seven or eight months into our debt payoff. 
but now that I've been doing it, it's really, really encouraging because debt payoffs sometimes can feel slow. And so if you're only focusing on how much your debt is decreasing, that's not as exciting as focusing on your whole financial picture overall. So if you're putting money into an emergency fund or you have real estate that you own that's going up in value, or you have retirement accounts that you have invested in that are going up in value, then all of that contributes to your net worth. Your net worth is just everything you own, all of your assets minus everything that you owe, all your liabilities. So if your liabilities are decreasing and your assets are increasing, that's more of a change than if you're just focusing on how much your liabilities are decreasing. So tracking your overall net worth, your overall financial picture is something that's really, really important to do. I track our net worth in two different ways. One, I have a net worth spreadsheet, big surprise. It's actually available for free for you guys. So I will put that link in the video description if you want to download it for free. Again, it's an instant download to Google Sheets and I just give it away for you guys as a thank you for all of your support and watching my channel. And I also just feel so strongly about the importance of tracking net worth that I want you guys to get started and you can use my network spreadsheet that I use every single month in my videos if you want to. The other thing that I do to track our net worth is I do it through Personal Capital. And Personal Capital is an app that allows you to connect all of your accounts, so all of your assets and all of your liabilities, and then it automatically calculates your net worth for you. So I really like using an app because it's just easy to log on here and there and just double check things. And then the other thing I love about Personal Capital is I am still learning about investing. We are investing for retirement and we have a strategy that we use that's really simple and really easy, but it's always nice to have more information and they have a retirement investment checkup where they analyze your different investments and the fees that you're being charged and what percentage of your money is in stocks or bonds or international versus domestic and all that kind of stuff. So I really think that those features are very helpful if you want a quick look at where your investments are. Maybe you have a 401k and you don't even know what it's invested in. So if you log in with personal capital, it's really easy to see where everything is. Plus the other thing they do is they send me an email every single day that the stock market is open and they tell me how my investments did that day. I really like having that alert to just show me kind of what's going on with the stock market and keeping me up to date. So if you wanna check out Personal Capital, I do have a link in the video description and you can download it for yourself and track your net worth through there like I do. It's also helpful if you're not really interested in having to manually update all these numbers every single month because you've got enough going on in your life. It just kind of automates it all for you so you're not having to update it in the spreadsheet physically because I'm telling you as you're paying off debt to track your entire net worth rather than just your debt payoff is very encouraging. And then finally, the fifth thing that we did to pay off over $120,000 of debt in two years is we reduced our impulse spending. So like I said, we do have personal spending money built into our budget, but we have gotten in a good mental state about spending. So for example, I would go into Target and I wouldn't be able to leave without spending one to $200. No matter what I went in there for, I wouldn't go in with a list, I would get distracted by all the things in there and I would just impulse spend. And then I would come home and I would feel guilty and I wouldn't enjoy the items. Plus I would be in more credit card debt. And that was just not a good feeling, it wasn't a good habit, but I was stuck in it. I didn't know how to get out of it. I didn't know that there was a different way that things could be, it just felt like that's what people do and that's what I do and that's who I am and I don't know how to change that. And it definitely takes time to get better at this but I'm telling you it's very possible and doing so feels so much better than spending in an impulsive way. So I first of all started going in with a list. Second of all, I did curbside pickup as much as possible. Third, I did more of an inventory on my life and decluttered, figured out what I needed, and also kind of took a look at like how many candles did I have? When I went into Target and I bought more candles, did I need candles? Like how many did I have in my house? And then when I collected all the candles throughout my house and realized I had 20 candles that needed to be used and hadn't been burned, I like had a reality check of, okay, I don't need to buy more candles. Like, yeah, candles are fun and it's nice to have this one or that one or I like how that one smells, but I have a lot of other ones that I really like that smell nice and using the things you have and really enjoying them before you go buy more new things was something that became a normal practice for me and for my husband and has really been life-changing for us because the impulse spending 
was a big factor in us not making financial progress. So when it comes to cash flow for your debt payoff, you can increase your income or you can decrease your expenses or both and that will free up money to pay off more debt faster. And decreasing your expenses is good, but I don't think decreasing to a restrictive level is good. I think just cutting out the impulse spending out of the expenses is all you need to do and then keep spending as you normally would after you cut out all the impulse spending. And that's pretty much what we've done. And then if you could increase your income on the other side of things, that's how you really can make faster progress because you have more buying power. You just have more power when you have more income coming in and that's going to get you there way faster. Making an extra $500,000 a month is going to get you debt free so much faster than if you use coupon codes and spend too much money on a website anyway. Like, yeah, you're saving a few dollars, but making the purchase in itself is spending money. And then, you know, reducing how much you're spending on electricity and gas and stuff like all the essential utilities, that's just not practical and healthy to try to cut those things back. So if you can cut out the impulse spending from your expenses, I feel like you really, really level up in how much money you have available to pay off debt. So those are five things that we did to pay off over $120,000 of debt in two years. I like, I just keep saying that to myself and I just can't believe we did it. I feel so excited with what we we're able to accomplish in two short years compared to where we've been for so many years. So if you're thinking of getting started with debt payoff, this is your sign go do it. We have about three more years, I think or so in our debt payoffs. So if you want to do it with me, subscribe, follow me, come and join me for my videos every single week. I'll be talking debt payoff. I'll be talking budgeting. I'll be talking investing all the personal finance things that we've been doing that have been leading us to financial success. We can do it together. We can learn and grow together. And I just want all my followers and subscribers to end up being debt free, wealthy, early retirees. So if that's something you're interested in doing, then hit that red subscribe button to follow along with our journey and do it with us. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and I will see you guys soon in my next video. Bye.